Hi, welcome back to Solo Adventures. My name is Livy, and I'm here again with a, another solo game review. So this, like all of the games that I've reviewed so far, is an entrant in this year's BGG Solitaire PMP contest. Today we are taking a look at Lifeguard Surf and Rescue, which is a neat little game that was made by designer Harrison Marchant. So Lifeguard Surf and Rescue is a small, easy to build game. You need only one sheet of paper, something to write with, and two dice, and it can be played in five to ten minutes. But is this game any good? Let's find out. So here we are, set up for a game of Lifeguard Surf and Rescue. So I have a little bit of a fancy setup. Uh, you don't need to make it look quite as nice as the one I have here. All you really need to do is print off the file on just a normal piece of paper. It comes in both color and in black and white. As you can see here, I have the color version and I have laminated it so I can use it with a wet erase marker. I highly suggest using this technique for whenever you make a game that involves writing on paper. It saves you the trouble of having to print out a new one every time and you can always play in glorious full color. So, to play Lifeguard Surf and Rescue, first we need to roll two dice and add the results together to get our starting resource points. Okay, seven. According to the rules, if we're not happy with this score, we could roll again, but then we have to accept whatever we get. So I'm not going to gamble with that. I think seven is an okay place to start. And yeah. So now what we do is we can use our resource points to buy different tools that we can use to save drowning people. So we can have rescue boards, which cost one resource point, and they allow us to add or subtract one from a single die result. So, for example, a roll of two could be a one or a three. Then we have jet skis, which let us flip over a single dice result to its opposite face. So, for example, a five would be a two, or a six would be a one. And then we have boats, which cost three resource points, and they allow you to re-roll one or both of your dice results coming up. So, let's see, we have seven resource points. What do we want? Um, I think I'm going to buy a jet ski and a boat and a rescue board. And I guess that's another rescue board. So now we spent all seven of our resource points. So then our next step is to see where the swimmers are going to appear in the water. So first we roll our two dice and we decide which one is the x-axis and which one is the y-axis. We can decide, but I'm just going to do them as they appear here. So one and two. We have one struggling surfer here. two, and four. Another one there. We're going to roll for five surfers. According to the rules, five surfers is for a normal game. If we want, we can adjust the difficulty by changing the number of swimmers in the ocean. A very easy game, for example, would be only three surfers. Um, an easy game would be four surfers. Normal is five surfers. And if we want Hoff mode, which I love, is seven or more surfers. But we are not David Hasselhoff. We are just going to play normal. Again, six and two. Two and two. And one more. One and six. 
So pretty much everybody is in pretty shallow water except for this one poor guy all the way back up here. So a round of this game works like this. We roll our two dice and we decide which of our dice is going to correspond to which number here. So let's see, we have a four and a six. We don't have anybody drowning along the four here. We have one here. Uh, we have somebody drowning over here and over here. So let's see, six and four. All right, so the way that it works is that we pick numbers that are along this axis. So for example, we're gonna do uh, four and six. So what we do is we go like this until we reach the six. We go across here, we have saved one swimmer. So he's worth three points. Six and three. So we can take six and three. And we saved another swimmer here, so that's another three points. Five and three. Three and five, five and three. That's not going to give us, this isn't going to save any of the swimmers and so we're going to have to manipulate the dice somehow with our items. So we can use one of our rescue boards to change this result of a three into a two and then we have a two and a five. And we saved two swimmers on this round. Each swimmer is usually only three points, but if you save more than one swimmer on a round, you get to double that score. So instead, I have three, six, twelve. So all right, um, let's total up our score. We have twelve and three and three, so that's eighteen. Then we also get a refund on the lifeguard aids that we did not use. For example, we didn't use this one, so we get a point. Didn't use that, so we get two. Didn't use that, so we get three. So from the lifeguard aids, we have six points. If we add six to 18, we get 24. So this is a game where you don't necessarily win or lose, you just mark down what your high score is and you attempt to beat that. If we didn't save one of these surfers, we would have had to deduct three points from the score. So what did we think about this game? Let's go into the final thoughts. First off, uh, as usual, I'm going to talk about the build. And the build for this game is extremely easy. Uh, there's the, of course, easiest version where you can just print out the black and white and play this game on normal paper with a pencil or a pen. Or you can get a little bit fancy and print it out and either laminate it or stick it in one of those um, binder folder pocket things, you know, those clear plastic page protectors, page protectors, that's what they're called. So you can use a dry erase or wet erase marker on it. So you can use this board again and again. And that's what I recommend, partly because I actually played this game a lot. I found it weirdly addictive. Um, as soon as I was done with one try, because you can really do it in just a couple minutes, the uh, instructions say to... The instructions say that this game can be played in five to ten minutes, but my experience is really closer to like three. And it kind of feels a little bit arcadey in that sort of way, is constantly trying to beat your high score. Um, it's really light and really fun. And the elements of luck and chance are, I think, going to be the biggest um, divider of opinion for this game. 
I like, I, I happen to like the luck and kind of chance random elements that pop up in this game because it's just so fast and easy. Um, other people are not going to like it because it is, because there is really a huge difference between rolling high and rolling low on your initial resource points. Um, if you could roll as little as two and you could only buy like two bodyboards or one jet ski, or you could roll 12 and just have multiple of everything. So some people are not gonna like that. Also where the swimmers show up is very dependent on luck and can also change the difficulty of the level significantly. So not only is it the number of the swimmers, it's where they are. So if I for some reason rolled a lot of fives, um, I might put all of my swimmers along the five axis here and it would make it much easier in subsequent tries to uh, get multiple all at once, which as we know allows us to double our score for that round and that makes a huge difference. I think that this game is lacking a little something. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but I feel like it could be somehow a little bit more in depth. Um, on this board, if you look very closely, you can see there's a little shark fin icon that's sticking up over the water. And I was kind of excited because when I saw it, I thought, oh, this is going to be a mechanic. Because in the black and white version, you can also see the little shark fin. So I thought maybe it was an obstacle. It isn't, it's just part of the set dressing. And that's fine, but I think it would be a little bit more fun if there was maybe a card or a dice mechanic that would help to determine different um, conditions that can happen in the ocean. Um, or if sharks can appear randomly, or maybe whirlpools. It would also be cool if this was more round based because you could make it so that you have a different amount of time to save each of the swimmers depending on where they are. So for example, in the shallow water, you can save them within uh, three turns, and in the middle you can save them within two, and in the deep water you can save them within one, or vice versa. Uh, just, just something to think about. I also think that it would lend a bit more fun and a little bit more strategy if there was some way to gain these items during the course of gameplay. So if you could somehow randomly spawn them somewhere, or if there was like a card drawing kind of mechanic, like if you get to a certain special marked square, you can turn over a card and you can see what happens. And maybe you get uh, another item, or maybe you have some kind of special condition that happens. I, I would like that. Because this game relies so heavily on luck, I think that it would really increase the fun to add even more uh, luck and novelty and just more fun and crazy things that can happen. So all in all, I really like this game. I highly recommend that you check it out. Um, it's really fast and really easy. You can play multiple rounds in very fast succession if you like. I've been playing this game in between rounds of testing other longer games for this contest. It makes a fun little puzzle to do maybe during your lunch break or something. You can just use a dice roller app on your phone. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what I do here, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm going to be making a video review for each and every entrant in this year's contest. It's a pretty crazy task, especially for a beginner YouTuber like me, but I am currently having a lot of fun doing it and there is no sign of stopping in the future. So yeah, please like and subscribe. And if you're interested, you can also check out a new Facebook group that I have started where you can meet up with other solo adventurers and talk about all kinds of solo gaming and game experiences together with other people who are just as nerdy as you. Thank you so much once again. I'll see you in the next video and take care of yourself. Bye.